Hello, I'm Luxbrush. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship's Magic, Season 4, as a whole. Looking at our thoughts as a whole in Season 4, overall, I really liked this season. There were some points where you kind of just questioned what the writers were thinking, but they were so few and far between that it really didn't take much away from this season. I definitely like Season 4. We had standalone episodes, but we also had an overall story progression that was touched on throughout the season. Though they did leave little things that are still up to question, but we'll talk about that later. So in terms of having the overarching story progress, that's more in line with Season 1, where you find out about the Grand Galloping Gala three episodes in, and then culminate the season with the Grand Galloping Gala. This time, we begin with giving up our ultra-powerful elements of harmony and get the mystery of what's in the box. And how do we find the keys? I like that you have having little trinkets that each member of the main six gets to represent their element from people who they helped understand the element. And that brings up one of my favorite episodes of this season, Rarity Takes Manhattan. <laughs> that was a really enjoyable episode. The only thing that baffled me and you a lot during this season was one of the events that happened in that episode which is like why does no one treat twilight as a princess though we kind of found that out at the end if all she does is wave and smile i don't think the populace currently have respect for her yeah but you would still think that there would at least be some ponies doing double takes because you don't see an alicorn walking down the street every day mm-hmm I think it's the only real grab I had about the season is the fact that they only let Twilight be received as a princess when it was valuable to the story. They, they really should have brought it up more often and maybe had paparazzi like looking around everywhere or something that showed that people recognized her as a princess. Even if she's currently seen as a figurehead, there'd still be people after her to prove that this figurehead is doing something to disgrace the crown or, you know, stuff like that. Yeah, and it's just... To me, it really kind of felt like the downfall of the season, that she was only a princess when it was important for her to actually be recognized as a princess. Yeah, it got to the point watching the season where I only noticed her wings when they pointed it out to us. Like, she did something with them. Most of the time, I was like only seeing Twilight without her wings until I went, wait a minute. Yeah, she has wings. <laughs> no, they made it very easy to forget that she was a princess and an alicorn. Which, after all the trouble that was gone through to make her into a princess... Yeah, they were forced to spend so much time getting her to this point. The fact that Hasbro seemed to rush season 3 because they wanted to do a movie that you don't like. <laughs> it doesn't exist. <laughs> Hasbro spent so much time getting us to the point where we had Princess Twilight Sparkle that they pretty much forced season 3 to be short and rushed and to get out a movie so they could have more toys, not only of Princess Twilight, but of dolls that were trying to compete with another doll line. So yeah, other than the fact that I enjoyed the movie and you didn't, <laughs> to me season four made up for that because other than that point of us going, you know, she's not a princess. Oh wait, she is a princess. Why don't they remind us of that more often? There was a lot more good than there was bad this season. Definitely. I was trying to think of like my favorite episodes and the list of episodes that were meh or disliked is much shorter than the list of episodes I liked. I mean, my top three, actually it's more than top three because two of them are two-parters. <laughs> it goes Pinky Pride, Twilight's Kingdom, and then I suddenly can't remember the name of the season starter, but that's the next Princess one. Princess Twilight Sparkle. Ah, thank you. So it goes Pinky Pride, Twilight's Kingdom, Princess Twilight Sparkle. Those are my top three, and right below that is Rarity Takes Manhattan. Manhattan, and don't forget Mod Pie. You keep forgetting that in your list. Sorry? I, I love her, but for some reason that keeps escaping me. It's just I think it's mainly because my brain clogs up the top episodes with the two-parters that I completely forget that I need to add Mod Pie in there, because I think my brain may also squish together Pinky Pride and Mod Pie as one episode in my head. <laughs> Because they're both just that awesome. It would have been very interesting to see an episode with Cheese Sandwich and Mod Pie at the same time. <laughs> I don't know why, but I suddenly mixed it in with 8-Bit Theater, except replaced with Cheese Sandwich going, I like cheese sandwiches! Welcome to Canaria. Or, I like rocks. <laughs> <laughs> I like cheese sandwiches! I like rocks. <laughs> 
I love parties. So does she. <laughs> <laughs> Can't you tell how excited she is, cheese sandwich? Yes, she's absolutely. I suddenly forgot a word for excitement. She's actually really excited. <laughs> um, how about ecstatic? <laughs> That's it. She's absolutely really ecstatic. Yeah, can't you tell? I'm thrilled. <laughs> <laughs> well, my list mostly matches yours. I wasn't as taken with the season opener. It had some nice points to it, but I don't think I'd put it in my top. I have to add instead three's a crowd. Just because Discord is that freaking awesome. <laughs> and that song. <laughs> All about a glass of water. Only Discord could pull that off. Mm-hmm. But it's and more and more and more and more. <laughs> that and the amazingly talented John Delancey. Mm-hmm. Who else can play Discord except for Q? <laughs> Where would you place this overall in the four seasons we have so far? I think I would be torn between this one and season two for my favorite. Season three is definitely my personal low point. So probably four, two, one, three. Mm. I think we're very similar. I put two at the top, mainly because Discord being introduced just kind of tops Tarek, but Tarek comes in such a close second as a season closer that, yeah, I mean, you know, we got Dragon Ball Z action plus Magical Girl action, so kind of makes up for it. And then we have season one, because it started it all. And then we have season three, which we pretty much probably both agree on that it's... Uh. <laughs> it suffered a great deal for the creation of something that does not exist. <laughs> uh, I just wish it would have been a normal 26 episode season that I think we would have probably liked it just as much as the other seasons, but because everything felt so rushed. No, there were so many episodes in season three that really would have benefited from being two-parters. Mm -hmm. The reformation of Discord, the season finale, I mean even the Trixie episode should have been a two-parter. Mm -hmm. I'm just glad season five is confirmed for a full 26 episodes. Though I guess that means a lot of drawing for me. <laughs> <laughs> and I really hope yeah. season five is... Oh, you go. I was gonna say, and now back to season four. <laughs> <laughs> Anything else you really liked or disliked about the season? I liked the songs this season. It wasn't too many songs. Sometimes it felt like we were getting songs every episode. And I know we had at least one episode that had more than one song in it. But I think overall it was a very good use of song. And come on, Weird Al singing, you had to have that. Yeah, I think that's one of the reasons I loved Pinkie Pride so much. It's like. Who else could compete with Pinkie Pie and have it be a fun competition and not a rivalry competition that everyone, someone gets disappointed at? <laughs> because it just was plain awesome. I mean, Weird Al Yankovic in My Little Pony and the fact that he actually is kind of a brony. <laughs> and he knows <laughs> Daniel Ingram. From what I understand, Daniel Ingram was part of his band. So yeah, pretty awesome. And speaking of awesome, I'm glad that they released a extended version of Make a Wish. Mm-hmm. And that actually surprised me that they released some songs from the season before it even finished uh, on their next volume release of the soundtracks for MLP. Though I do wish they would release the reprisals from a couple of the songs they released on the first disc. That would be nice, but you know, it's really not surprising that they're releasing stuff in advance. I mean, we see all sorts of stuff in the toy line before it's reflected in the series. Mm. Why not capitalize on the music while the interest is still high? Hmm. Yeah, considering I myself bought a copy of the extended theme and the extended Make-A-Wish song. Mm -hmm. And yes, overall, I really liked the music for the season. It was paced out well. They didn't cram it all together in one episode or make it feel like they were adding too many songs to any particular episode. What song, since we're on music right now, do you feel was the weakest this season? Bats. Yes. And I myself couldn't really see the resemblance to... Nightmare Before Christmas, because apparently it was supposed to resemble the way the guy who did the music for Nightmare Before Christmas did his music. And I just didn't feel that. It felt like a different style to me entirely. No, it has absolutely no collation with one of my favorite Disney non-Disney movies. <laughs> oh, and speaking of songs that are supposed to resemble other songs, going back to that, and specifically <laughs> Pinky Pride, the intro song for that... The first song Pinky sings is actually supposed to be inspired 
by the song that Belle sings at the beginning of Beauty and the Beast. Mm -hmm. And I actually felt that. It felt like, you know, this reminds me of this song. And to find out later that, oh, it was inspired by that song. That's cool. I felt that. <laughs> so what surprised you the most about this season? Hmm. Maybe define surprise better. Pleasantly surprised, unpleasantly surprised. Oh, that's a story twist I didn't expect. <laughs> How about all three? <laughs> okay. Um, Start with unpleasant. pleasant. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, it's unpleasant then. <laughs> no, 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 no. We, we can go with pleasant. Pleasantly surprised that our final villain was Tirok. Did not <laughs> see that coming. Me either. And this season, I did as much as I could to stay away from spoilers. I mean, I wouldn't look at Tumblr. I wouldn't look at Equestria Daily. I made sure that Hide Season 4 tag was on Equestria Daily. I did everything I could to even avoid the names of the episodes. Yeah, you can figure out a lot from the names. So, let's see. Unpleasant surprise. The Equestria Games. Oh, yes. I agree with you on that. Actually, I've agreed with you so far. My pleasant surprise is Tarek. My unpleasant would be Equestria Games, especially since the name. That name was like, oh, because that one I caught by accident. I was like, oh, Equestria Games. Oh, we're going to finally wrap that up. And then you went, they should have called this Spike and his amazing ability to not be well-written in episodes that focus on him. <laughs> so what was your third one? Third category I said was what surprised me most in terms of a story arc. And that's back to season finale of Discord actually turning evil. But yeah. I guess that's what we get when your redemption's only one episode. <laughs> that's a good point. And something that I don't think occurred to either of us in Inspiration Manifestation, but mm. Rarity basically got the same power that she had in Power Ponies. She got to make stuff up just by thinking about it. Oh, yeah. That is an interesting connection there. That probably explains how she could use this power so easily, other than the spell would probably make it easy for her. But the fact that she's had experience with that before, being sucked into a magical comic book. Speaking of which, I want to know where that store is, you know, because I, I want one of those comic books, maybe. <laughs> maybe. I, I, I have to be careful what book. <laughs> yes, yeah, stay away from that particular section. <laughs> or the horror section, or any section where you're like, yeah, no. <laughs> I would probably also stay away from the kids section as well, because some of those kid books you're like, God, this is so horribly written, I would hate to be stuck in there because there'd be some like weird claws that I wouldn't understand. <laughs> like, how am I supposed to get out of this comic book? And then later, what do you mean all I had to do was smile and say, thank you for teaching me a lesson? <laughs> that doesn't even make any sense. <laughs> also, Flutter Hulk. <laughs> yeah. Oh, you're hurting my friends. That doesn't make me upset. You squished that bug! I'm going to dare you, I pot! Yeah, that, that was a point that didn't make sense. Like, really, Fluttershy, your friends? None of this made you angry up until this point. I know we're trying to show that you are a shy, gentle pony, but come on. <laughs> that was kind of like Twilight Sparkle in the season finale where... People are getting hurt. Oh, things are going on. You destroyed my books! <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to show you what I'm really made of! <laughs> and that reminds me of this great comic I saw where Trixie's coming back into town going, This time, Twilight, I'll beat you in magic! And then she sees Twilight blows, blast Tyrick into a mountain. And she goes, ah, Maybe next time! <laughs> <laughs> Yes, well, continuing to draw parallels from Power Ponies, mm -hmm. um, Twilight had quite the power up by the season finale. Not that she was shooting freeze rays and heat rays like her Power Pony counterpart, but mm. she was definitely putting out some energy there. Yeah, as I mentioned before, Dragon Ball Z levels of energy. <laughs> mm-hmm. And even though Seabreeze didn't have any lines, we had Seabreeze visible in the episode, giving more credence to the whole Dragon Ball Z thing. Yep, being voiced by Vegeta kind of does that for you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Actually, from what I understand, the voice actor for Piccolo may have voiced in an episode. Not in this season, but I think he's actually voiced in one of the other seasons. I need to look it up again. But I know that we, there's actually been several people from the Dragon Ball voice actor cast who have actually voiced 
characters on MLP. Mm, interesting. Well, they're all voice actors, and, you know, getting paid is kind of important. <laughs> yeah, but there's only so many jobs available, and sometimes you wonder, did they look at your casting history and go, oh, you were on Dragon Ball Z, and you want to voice act on a show about multicolored ponies for young girls. I am Vegeta! Of course I do! <laughs> hey, Vegeta makes more sense than Delando. <laughs> Oh, yes. I, I, lo I love Shining Armor, but Delando scares me. <laughs> yes, fun fact, if the audience doesn't know, the voice actor for Shining Armor also voiced a character in the anime Escaflone. A crazy villain, a crazy young man villain, was voiced by the young voice actor for Shining Armor at the time. Crazy, homicidal, gender-bended guy. Evil villain. And then we get... Calm, collective, older brother, shining armor. And you just sit there and go, that, 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 whoa. <laughs> it's just one of those things where you're like, that doesn't even make sense. And there were a few episodes you did on your own before I started joining you. Power Ponies was one of them, and so was Bats. But for another low point, Castlemania. Very non-cohesive story that just did not make sense and was very Scooby-Doo of everyone getting separated and running into each other and being scared. Ah yes, Castlemania. Fun episode, except I was expecting it to be Luna, not Pinkie Pie. <laughs> yeah, because the castle of the two sisters should be more familiar to her, mm -hmm. considering it was the castle of the two sisters. Yeah, and the whole shadowy cloak thing, she's done that before. <laughs> mm-hmm would have made more sense. Though I gotta say the side stories with Applejack and Rainbow Dash and Fluttershy and Rarity were just fun. <laughs> no, I think we were still too early into the season. I wasn't into the groove yet because I was just like, oh, come on, really? And then, you know, another one that fans seem to be very divided on, Daring Don't. We discussed that a little bit, but more as a, as a side address in our other episodes. Ah oh, yes, that episode. I really enjoyed it. And as I said before in a special video I did, I had no problem with Daring Do being real. I think the main problem a lot of people had is they thought the author of the Daring Do books was Twilight's mother because of a thing, a little clue that apparently was put in one of the comics, which I didn't even notice myself because I have that comic. <laughs> and people are holding those comics too much to canon in my opinion. To me, they're like a side canon, you know, an alternate universe. So I don't really place much faith in them, especially since when I understand if the show contradicts the canon in the comic books, the show canon is canon. <laughs> yeah, and a lot of the comics don't feel like the show. They feel more like fan fiction. No mm -hmm. slur intended to fan fiction writers, but it had a different feel and the comics just seem to try too hard to fit in a lot of in jokes and pop culture things. You no, know, oh, we'll put this in special for the fans who will recognize it. And sometimes the story seems to get lost in the wayside. Yeah, especially to me, the even though we shouldn't talk too much about this since we're talking about season four, but a quick thing of the fact that both me and you agree that the Luna in the comics books doesn't feel like the Luna from the show. No, it feels more like fan Luna. Now back to Daring Don't. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so any particulars about that episode? I'm mostly okay with Daring Do being real because we don't have the same social media and technology in the Ponyverse that we have in our world. Mm -hmm. So it would be more possible to pull that off. But there are certain things that need to be addressed like how does she ever get time to write the books and how often do the villains come crash her cottage as RK Yearling. Mm -hmm. Because they showed up at her home in the Daring Don't episode. So they obviously know it's her. Which then also begs the question of how do you get away with those cheesy disguises you pulled to buy the ring <laughs> when they came to your house and you don't look like Daring Do and they stole the ring? Yeah, that's the one real like irking point for me. I was like, R really? Really? That's, I mean, um, just, uh, yeah. <laughs> well, it, 
it's a sub rule that villains always fall for cheesy disguises. Mm -hmm. But that doesn't mean you like seeing it when you're watching. Uh, especially when it doesn't seem like they're really trying. I know they're. I know the episode was kind of a play on things. I mean, really, at least have her like change her outfit or something because she was wearing the same outfit, but I think all she had was on a, was a mustache or her hat or something was different. <laughs> mm -hmm. Though at the same time, she was trying to get captured in the end, so was she expecting that gambit to fail? Mm. Or fail in such a way that Arizona would arrive and unmask her. Mm -hmm. Also, why didn't Rainbow Dash jump in sooner? <laughs> Because she was being fangirl and doubting herself. Uh, one of my favorite parts about that episode <laughs> is the geek fight where Rainbow Dash wins. And you're sitting there stunned because you're like, Rainbow Dash won that argument? <laughs> yeah, I think Rainbow Dash won that argument because she adapted more quickly to the fact that all of this now applies in the real world. <laughs> I also love how everyone else is like, I have no idea what's going on. Pinkie Pie goes, I got it! <laughs> of course, the hyperactive Pinkie Pie was the only one outside of the two geeks that understood. <laughs> Though who says Pinkie Pie hasn't read the books either? <laughs> oh, it's a very popular book series. I'm sure that a lot of ponies have read at least one of them. But there's a difference between a casual reader enjoying a book and someone obsessive like Rainbow Dash or someone with so much attention to detail like Twilight. Hmm. So any final thoughts on that episode? That it was fun, and I hope we get to see Daring Do again. Oh yes, definitely. Daring Do, Mod Pie, and Cheese Sandwiches are all on my list of characters to see again. <laughs> so, any other episodes? I enjoyed Flight to the Finish. You know, I like the song, Hearts as Strong as Horses. I like how they came up with a good routine, and how... Diamond Tiara and Silver Spoon failed to discourage them and then changed tactics. Ah, uh, and I like the fact that they kind of subtly attacked the whole fan question of is Scootaloo really disabled in the show or are they ever going to tackle that? And I love how they kind of just left it up in the air like, maybe you'll fly, maybe you won't. But that doesn't change who you are, basically. Yeah, so they left it in the series to go either way. But they did address the fact that her wings are too small for her to fly right now. Mm -hmm. Though that kind of leaves up in the air of bulk biceps. <laughs> yeah, if that's the case, how the heck does Snowflake fly? <laughs> Sorry, the way you said that. How the heck does Snowflake fly? <laughs> it just sounded funny to me. I think the phrase itself actually sounds funny to me. Snowflake fly. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, and speaking of which, we actually got an official name for him. You know, bulk biceps instead of snowflake, as all the fans call them. Mm hmm But you'd already used the show name, so I thought I would have fun and say the fan name. Ah. Well, it gave me a chance to bring up the fact that he actually got a real name this season. Mm-hmm. And now moving on to what we hope for the future. What we hope happens in Season 5. I hope a lot happens in Season 5, because they left a lot of little things in this season where you're like, Are, are you going to bring that up again? Kind of like the shadowy figure at the end of Castlemania, that mm -hmm. may actually have already been resolved. It could have been the shadow of Tyrek. Except that if Tyrek was lurking in the castle, couldn't he have seen that Twilight was an alicorn? Maybe, maybe not. He may not have actually wandered all the way into the castle. He may have just been standing next to it reminiscing about a past or something. Or looking for clues for where the sisters are now. But there's like a bunch of other things that they kept leaving at the end of episodes where you're like, what? Kind of like, Fluttershy's tooth, tooth, is she, is she still a vampire pony? <laughs> Does she still crave the delectable juice of the fresh, healthy apples? <laughs> <laughs> Which would be quite awesome, I say. I said we bring up this stuff later. So I would love to see Flutterbat back, especially if we can use it in a really cool kind of way. Yes, because Flutterbat seems to be a better flyer than Fluttershy. Mm -hmm. And since all she craves is the juice of apples, she has more confidence. She just has the animalistic drive to go after things. So maybe it could be used as like a, well, kind of like a Flutter Hulk, except Flutter Bat. <laughs> <laughs> so what are the little things you notice that you wish they would resolve in Season 5? Mainly those two. There's lots of things I'd like to see in Season 5. But th those were my two main ones for, oh, this is a leftover bit. The other thing is, I want to 
them to show that comic shop. <laughs> that would be interesting, especially if it helps them, you know, find something. But I remember something else that they kind of hinted at that I talked about in our review for the season finale. I hope they use those two ambassadors or whatever you call them, those ponies from other countries, in the season opener of season five to actually get us to start doing some globe trotting next season. That's definitely one of the things I hope we do since we've kind of opened it up of her saying, well, I'm the princess of friendship. I need to spread friendship all over Equestria and beyond. Well, show us, please, for the love of God, show us. Yes, show us more of Equestria. Show us the land of the Griffins. Show us the land that Scorpan and Tirok are from. Show us Saddle Arabia. Yes, and let's open with what the problem was that the ambassadors showed up to discuss with the other three princesses. That seemed to be so sensitive that not even Twilight Sparkle could come in on it. Yeah, and considering that Twilight Sparkle was let in on the fact that Tirok was busy taking over the world, and was pretty much trusted to single-handedly stop Tirok by keeping the Alicorn magic away from him. I think it's more left up to the trust of the ambassadors than the trust of Celeste, Luna, and Cadence, who all know that Twilight is absolutely trustworthy, but they didn't want to upset the ambassadors, and the ambassadors just wanted the most recent princesses, since they know that they're what they're capable of. Check your phrasing there. They wanted the most established princesses. What did I say? Most recent, which would be Twi. Well, flip that. I meant most established, <laughs> as you said, I think. And well, moving on. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, there's a bunch of things. Like, I... As I said before, I want more places to go, maybe some new characters. And if we do end up going to the Griffin Land, hey, let's bring Gilda back. Why not? Yeah. Let's see what she's been up to. And if we're traveling the world, hey, we may run into what Trixie's been doing after her last defeat. Since she's all humble now, what is she doing? Maybe she's helping an orphanage. I don't know. Ooh, that would be a good plot. Um, it looks like Trixie's doing something evil, but she's actually doing something to help an orphanage, but in the process it looks like from the outside that she's doing bad things again. Mm -hmm. Or some other similar nice thing that she's trying to do, but to the outside, you know, from the main six's point of view, she's doing something bad. Yeah. So what are your aspirations <laughs> for season five? Mm -hmm. Beyond the clues we've gotten dropped in season four. <laughs> Beyond travel, seeing other lands, and running back into a couple characters that you mentioned, cheese sandwich, mod pie. Let's actually go to the rock farm. Let's get some more stuff involving the main six's families. Oh yeah, that's a big that would be big on my list. Actually seeing some of the main some of the main six's families we haven't seen before. Like Rainbow Dash's parents, Fluttershy's parents, maybe more time interacting with Rarity's parents. I know we're never really probably gonna tackle Applejack's parents, but <laughs> No, kid show. Mm-hmm. And if we did have that cliche of like, they're actually still alive, they've just been away. That's kind of another hard thing to tackle too. Like, why have they abandoned their family? <laughs> yeah, and why didn't we ever hear from them? And if they were missing, why wasn't the rest of the Apple family out looking for them? It mm -hmm. just brings up a lot of stuff. I can tell you who I don't want to see back, the Flim Flam brothers. <laughs> Two losses should be enough. Yeah, I'm surprised at how quickly they came back. Last time I was like, I wasn't expecting more Flip Flam brothers quite yet. <laughs> no, and definitely not in the same area. I thought maybe if we were traveling, you know, that they were trying their tricks elsewhere. Hmm. So, what don't you want to see out of Season 5? Other than the Flim Flam brothers. Uh, I do not want to see anything that my brain instantly and automatically translates to new toy line being the only purpose for its existence. <laughs> yeah, especially considering how long it took to actually get the Breezy toys out. I was surprised. I was like, I thought they would be toys out before they actually showed the Breezies on the... We're just now seeing inklings that they're actually coming out. And from what I remember about the article, they're only coming out in another country right now. Yeah, it's surprising because there's a lot of possibility there because there's so much difference in character design. Oh, well, maybe that's it. It's too many molds. Mm -hmm. It took them time to actually make the molds, and they just gave the initial designs over to DHX. And DHX was, okay, we'll introduce them. <laughs> the other things I wanted to see was more good music and maybe more guest stars, too. It would be nice to maybe have Patrick Stewart, since we've already had Q. Maybe get Patrick Stewart in there, because it would be 
awesome to actually have him voice Star Swirl the Bearded, because that would actually kind of be neat. <laughs> that would be neat, and I think that would be very in character for Star Swirl the Bearded. Mm -hmm. And that brings up another point of things that mean you probably want to see more flashbacks, more details on the sisters' past. Yes, more world building, more filling in of the past, and more discord. Mm -hmm. And maybe an actual confirmation of what we understand about Kate Cadence's origin. From the little books that they've released, the ones that are more canon than the comic books, Cadence was an actual Pegasus before she was an Alicorn, so maybe actually show that in the show. Mm -hmm. And spend a little time you know, explaining how an Alicorn princess came to be someone's foal sitter. Because Cadence didn't have a kingdom until they saved the Crystal Empire. So I think she was stuck twiddling her hooves much longer than Twilight was. Hmm. In terms of, I'm a princess, now what? Hey, that kind of makes sense, because we had this whole thing with Twilight just sitting around doing nothing for a while until the whole, what's in the box? Here's what's in the box. <laughs> it's your crown. What? I already have a crown. Yeah, but this gives you a point to have that crown. Oh! <laughs> Things I don't want to see in Season 5 is more badly written Pinkie Pie and Spike. <laughs> Come on, guys. Get your acts together and actually give us more consistency with those characters, for the love of God. Now, some good Spike episodes would be great. As, as we've said before, he needs to learn the lesson of tact. Mm-hmm. Because that seems to be one of the things he hasn't learned yet. <laughs> and please do it in a good way, not one where we're going, that was so out of character. <laughs> or... Wait a minute, you, you've, you're you contradicting yourself here. Spike apparently is really good at that, so why is he now bad? And that also leads on to another point I would like to see in Season 5. More consistent writing. I know we have several writers, but they have one head story supervisor. She should, like, you know, be able to keep things a little bit more consistent. <laughs> Nothing against her, she's doing a great job, but... Well, I think a lot of it is just you have multiple authors writing episodes at the same time. So then once they get an episode order, they can contradict each other in terms of, wait, Fluttershy's gotten more confident. Why is she back to being like this? Or the difference between Spike as a sidekick and Spike as the focus of an episode. Mm -hmm. And let's give some more episodes to Applejack and also not have them, I'm stubborn. <laughs> we got some of that this season. It's a lot better than we've had before, but still they have a little bit of the focus on she's stubborn. Maybe have some more stuff that deals with family and not the overreaction we had in the episode with the Chimera. <laughs> uh, some pony to watch over me. Thank you. You're welcome. Because, yeah, you know, family's important and lessons about interacting with your family would be good ones for the show. Because, you know, she's kind of reached her aspiration. She works on the apple farm. They raise wonderful crops. That kind of seems like all she wants. So. The other way to broaden her character would actually be to give her a new aspiration. Mm. Give her something else to strive for other than making the farm as good as possible. Yeah, something else that catches her interest or that she feels duty-bound to try, which could come up in the course of the travels that we're hoping will happen. Even the fact that they may travel could be it because that's breaking her away from her family and the family farm which have been her aspirations the entire time mm. and what they could also do is have the main six travel but keep other characters back like spike has to stay and take care of the library by himself for the first time ever or something you know for a long period of time and maybe have more interactions with sakura oh that's another thing we want out of season five more sakura we had her once this season <laughs> Or zebras. That's another thing. Zebra land. Wherever zebras are from. Let's show that. <laughs> yeah. And, hmm, here's a good way to disrupt the cutie mark crusaders. How about one crusader gets her cutie mark? Can't be a member of the cutie mark crusaders if you have your cutie mark. Yeah, doing something to change that balance up a little bit. Like I said, either have them, one of them get their cutie mark, or one of them starts doing something different from the rest and gets their cutie mark. Or, even better yet, have it kind of be a surprise to even the pony who gets the cutie mark. Like, she does something that she really likes, but she's so tired that she just goes to bed and wakes up the next morning, and there it is. Mm -hmm. So she can't even figure out what she did to get her cutie mark. Which means she can't advise her friends who are upset with her, that she can't even help them. 
that and like maybe she can't maybe she doesn't even realize that what she did to cutie mark so she doesn't even realize what her special talent is even though she has her cutie mark because the event mm -hmm. of her getting her cutie mark and the event of her realizing that she got her cutie mark are so separate that she doesn't connect the two mm -hmm. so they had to spend the entire episode figuring out what she did to get her cutie mark and they could even write it in such a way that not even the audience knows <laughs> wow we, we are like really creative people i did not know that <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you put enough sarcasm in that. <laughs> Villains we'd like to bring back. The Changelings. I would also like to see King Sombra back, because he needs more of a personality than crystals. Ponies. Slaves. <laughs> yeah. Just give that voice actor more money. <laughs> no, so I'm hoping that the Changelings were what the ambassadors from the other kingdom came regarding because they were blasted way the heck away from canterlot yeah we have no idea where they landed so they could have landed in his country and he maybe he suspects that his country is starting to be infiltrated by the changelings and he's asking princess celestia and the court for help though i'm surprised princess celestia didn't bring up in the discussions of um we have someone who detected a changeling pretty early on her name's twilight sparkle you may now know her as princess twilight sparkle <laughs> you know she's waiting just outside the room <laughs> Yeah, she's kind of the expert at this, though it was mainly because it was a pony she knew, and okay, she's not acting at all like she should, and then that whole thing with, she cast a spell on my brother and his eyes were in all weird. She's evil! <laughs> Can't you tell she's evil? No, she just kicked a puppy! <laughs> Since we had Turok, I, I know I already said I want Scorpan and us to go to Scorpion's land, but maybe some other Gen 1 villains. Cenebula would be fun, trapping everyone in illusions to steal their youth by granting them their heart's desire. Ooh, yeah, that would actually definitely work for Generation 4, because everyone in the main six has aspirations that they're striving for, and mm -hmm. that could even bring up what Applejack really wants. Mm -hmm. Maybe something she didn't even realize she wanted beyond what she already had. Mm -hmm. The other thing I would like for Season 5 is an overarching connecting story that we have stuff early on that builds up and plays into later episodes. And do it in such a way that it's not just... The key connecting together was nice, but it wasn't as connecting together as it would we would like it to be. But I know they're kind of writing for a younger audience, but they can still make it a little bit more connected than the keys were in this season. Maybe drop even more hints in each episode about what's going on in the pack ground maybe what they're doing for or since we hope they're traveling maybe have something go on in the background that people can notice that's like with the same ponies or similar sets of ponies or the ponies in the background are doing the same thing mm -hmm. or just off the side things that most people won't even notice but if you watch them overall you go oh though that speaking of which i should go back and watch all of season four to see if there's actually anything like that they hidden it that we haven't seen yet because we've been watching it spread out each week as opposed to a marathon session where things stand out more clearly. Especially since I can watch them on downloaded from YouTube without commercials. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know if it's up for pre-order yet on Amazon. Season four? I don't think so. I would have. I think I would have noticed because I keep a pretty close watch on Equestria Daily, and they're usually really up on those things. Well, they need time to get the special features put together. I mean, the season did just end not that long ago though we do have some official stuff to look forward to like the two sisters diary and the daring do books mm -hmm. and there's another one of those chapter books coming out um in the next couple months for applejack mm. and i think they've already announced the one for fluttershy mm. i so need to actually pick those up or i could just read your copies i have them set aside for you well any final thoughts on season four or hopes for season five <laughs> keep up the good work Oh yes, thank you DHX for the wonderful show you've been putting together for these past four years. It's amazing how good this show is. And the fact that there are so many people of all ages watching it. Thank you DHX. Thank you. Thanks for listening. This has been our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 4 as a whole. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this, please consider leaving a friendly comment emphasis on friendly, and or subscribing. If you'd like to see high quality versions of Lux's artwork, you can check them out over on DeviantArt.
If you'd like to follow up on our progress, or lack thereof, you can check us out over on Tumblr. Links in the description. We will be taking a break for about a month while I catch up on stuff that I've been pushing aside and meaning to do for this podcast in particular and other stuff I've been meaning to catch up on. But we will be coming back with our thoughts on My Little Pony Friendship is Magic seasons 1 through 3, along with doing some episodes on Disney movies. Thank you for listening, and please stay tuned. And here's an outtake from this episode. Hello, I'm Luxbrush. And I'm Ember. And this is our thoughts on My Little Pony, Friendship is Magic, Season 4. All of it. <laughs> I want you to say as a whole for me right here. As a whole. Okay, that way I have two options. <laughs> I was going to give you a clean take. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'll do the whole thing then. No, you have the pieces you can edit. <laughs> Blooper, check. Outtake, check. 